everyone, everybody. Hope you're having a great weekend. Today I'm going to continue my reading practice modeling for fourth through sixth grade, sorry, uh, sixth through eighth grade in reading on this video. My next one will be third through fifth grade reading. And I'll do one for you fifth grade math teachers that will apply to fourth, fifth, and sixth grade because a lot of questions in math, just like in reading, are either supporting or readiness where they need to have learned it the year before or they'll learn it that year to get ready for the next year would make it a supporting center for that next year. So let's take a look at the question. It's going to be an inference that you can draw from a select piece of writing. We've already done the first several together. Let me get this nice and set up for you guys so you don't have to struggle to see it. Uh, some of you might be a little up there in age but probably nobody's quite as old as me. So I want to make sure that I'm able to help you with this. So again, we should read the question softly on testing day, and we can do it loudly for now, underline and label. And yes, it does not matter whether you're taking the test online or in person, you still need to read the question softly. You should still be able to underline and label by annotating on your computer, uh, marking the tests, whatever way you've been teaching them. So what are the key words so that we can be able to evaluate and execute the strategies that we've been taught? It says the reader, that's us, the subject, conclude. So again, if we think of our thumb, our thumb as our introduction, our pointer finger as the body and the pinky as the conclusion. If I say, okay, I'm only gonna show you my pinky, what conclusion can I draw about what? The speaker, and it's only on two different lines. So if you can draw a conclusion, what they're saying is, because of whatever that you see on lines 14 and 15, there's this effect, this result, because of what we learn about the speaker in these two lines, C coming before E in the alphabet and cause coming before the effect the action coming before reaction in the alphabet, A coming before R. So if you think of it as the teeter, totter, teeter is the cause, then we have a transition that allows you to get to the totter, the effect. The C is the cause, which allows you to get to the transition that takes you to the effect, the result. So. Yeah, the, the question that was like this one uh, on the sixth grade test was number 13. It was a supporting standard, which means that fifth graders could have and should have learned it before they got to sixth grade, but only 56% of the kids did well in this one. And I could tell that it has to do with emotions, because all four of them in the answer choices on the one that was like this had emotional connections to a specific idea or a specific event. So is she hopeful about something positive? Does she have a desire for something positive? Is she discouraged by something negative? Or is she angry about something? Well, before we look at the rest, let's look at lines 14 and 15 
and actually see what we saw. There they are. Hopefully, I'll use my yellow. pencil to help you see that and that has to do with question number four because of what the speaker says in her poem in stanza one two three on lines 14 and 15 hopefully positive in time perhaps one day in the future so thinking in future tense everything will turn to gray and all the colors can exist in harmony. And so what we learned last time is we have to draw a conclusion that she goes from talking about the laundry in Sansa 2 to how this analogy relates to people being separated and hopefully learning how to someday get along together. So I'm going to take you to my redevising graphic organizer so that you can see there's my teeter and my totter. Uh, a, how does A relate to B? And so if you're going to start preparing for next year's two part answers, you've got to be able to know both parts. Okay, well, they're giving us the first part lines 14 and 15 is the A, the cause. So hopefully in time, emotion, positive. So I would draw an up arrow. Perhaps in the future, everything will turn gray and all the colors can exist in harmony. So she goes from beyond going, goes beyond talking about laundry to talking about every race, every color, every creed being able to say, hey, yes, we have differences, but we have enough similarities where we can put our silly, petty, grievances and disappointments aside, the entire world is not bad because of one person, per person in a specific population. We don't write off an entire race just because one person says or does something that's absolutely evil. Evil is in the world. And this is me extending beyond the question and the answer. And so Jacqueline's goal, dream, and hope that in one day in the future that we can all just live in harmony. And if I want to relate it to uh, a current event or an historical event, depending on your age, my, Michael Jackson or um, uh, what was the name of the young man? Uh, Ebony and Ivory, uh, Stevie Wonder, I believe, sang a song, Ebony and Ivory living together in perfect harmony. And so sometimes when you're explaining something, it's really cool to relate it to a current event or historical event. And so in the same way that Martin Luther King in his speech, and Stevie Wonder in his song wanted us all to exist in harmony. Well, let's see which one has to do most closely to that desire. So A is about laundry, that she's hopeful that one day she'll be able to have all of the laundry be one color. No, we went from the analogy to real life, so we would eliminate A. Desire for people to get along. Desire for people of different colors, yes. Desire is a positive thing. So two dum-dums so far, I call dum-dums details. To learn to get along, yes. With each other, with who? <laughs> with their own kind, no with each other. So that was uh, four dum-dums, four details that were true. Yes, she might be discouraged, but 
in the, those two lines, you can't put into something that's not there. Okay. So she's discouraged by the fact that white people No white people specifically were mentioned in lines 14 and 15, think that they're better than those of color. And that, that that might be true, but because discouraged is negative and her hopefulness is positive, we would eliminate um, letter C and I put my letters wrong, so I better fix those so I can model correctly. It's F, G, H, and J. If you're doing a paper test uh, this year for the last time, you're still going to have the alternating back and forth A, B, C, D, F, G, H, A. Angry is a negative situation, so I can pretty be pretty sure it's not that answer, but let's check and see what it says about anger. That she is angry by how white people, again, white people, White people were not mentioned. White people were not mentioned. Nothing about them thinking that they're better. So no, no opinion was mentioned. The way they treat other people who don't look like them. Uh, treating others. It was nothing about how people treat people. And there were nothing about actual looks. So since hardly any of those details were true, then we would eliminate everything except the positive desire of different colors to learn how to get along, not the positive desire that the laundry would be one color. If kids take things just simply, literally, and she's, and they stay with the laundry concept, they would probably try to draw a conclusion about that. But if you can understand the true author's purpose, you should be able to eliminate that she is not talking about laundry here. She's not sad as she's expressing these lines. She's hopeful, she's not angry. And so the answer we're gonna select is G. And again, those of you who are doing paper, you can double in the G, put a G here again. And then because the Scantron on paper is in a separate place than the book, test booklet, the 4G that you mark in your book like this, we'll call it the right shoe, it needs to match the 4G that we mark in the Scantron that we call the left shoe. And so I always believe in extending beyond the question. So what I would say, besides Stevie Wonder and his song, Ebony and Ivory and Michael, uh, not Michael Jackson, um, I believe he has a couple of songs about people getting along, but I can't think of them at this point. Martin Luther King in his speech. Ask your kids, what are some other characters, some other pe great people in history who, whose goal, whose idea, who were hopeful that we could all just get along? Who is somebody at your school that tries to get along with everybody regardless of their differences of beliefs because with my students this uh, uh, past uh, couple of days I was working up in Hearn Texas with some students and we were talking about how we might not call it racism in school uh, the way that we think of it as how it happens in the news but there's still a lot of bullying that goes on where some kids treat others differently or they're condescending towards those kids and i was able to get into some good discussions with the seventh and eighth graders from Hearn, texas uh, as we discuss this very relevant current issue and so when i come up with my passages i try to think how is how is how can I build relationships with the kids by making the content that I share with them relevant so that it piques their interest and so that they can get to the lever of rigor. And I was just blessed by uh, just 
to kind of put it in a nutshell, there were so many kids that walked out of my uh, trainings on uh, Thursday uh, telling me that was the first time they'd ever stayed awake an entire lesson. Uh, there were, uh, there was one boy that everybody said that he would spend the whole period in the corner playing with his little, one of his little friends and that he was there in his seat the entire time looking straight at me with full on attention. And so his challenge was to keep doing that. I even went during lunch to uh, sit down with a couple of boys who had been in trouble for misbehaving. And I, I felt like even though that I wasn't called there to, to be a consultant with behavior management, I feel like one of my strengths is connecting with kids who have trouble uh, relating and socializing with other people which is relevant to this topic. Uh, why can't all of us get along, even us, those of us who have a lot of family issues or backgrounds that cause us to believe that those are excuses, that those are good enough reasons why we can mistreat other students and other adults, and sometimes even our own parents. So thanks uh, goes out to the teachers and students from Hearn ISD, and a special thanks to Ms. Davis, who helped me set up the questionnaire so I would know my schedule, where I was going to go, and for making all of the copies for all the students to be able to have one so we could try and actually apply some of these strategies that we're doing here with you today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, please share this video if you're having teacher friends or if you know of students who are struggling with drawing conclusions based on a line, think of whatever is shared as the cause and the conclusion that can be drawn as the effect or the result of that situation. So take care of you guys and God bless.